Okay, okay. Amazing. Right, let's get us live. So that should be sending us into the VSGD careers group as we speak. Hello, welcome. Happy Friday, everybody. I hope the week's being kind to you. And we're here jumping in with yet another Friday Finance where we've got the joy of having Ruth Downs, financial advisor, to give us some of her wisdom um, in terms of finances as well. So I've just confirmed we are definitely in the group as it is trying to play it to me twice, which was very disconcerting then. I could hear myself speaking <laughs> and speaking about five seconds previously. Too. Awesome. So we are talking on a topic that is really relevant for a lot of people that are in the VSGD careers group. And we're here to talk with Ruth for 15 minutes on financial considerations for when we're moving job roles, when we're changing jobs, maybe when we're stepping into a new space. So I thought we could start off with Ruth, just give us an outline, aside from salary, because that's the big one that comes to mind for people. What financial considerations do people need to have as they change jobs within the vet profession? Okay, so 100% things that they need to have a look at is uh, one of my uh, go to's number one, you know what I'm going to say, Katie, I bet, is making sure you have some form of emergency fund. So um, really making sure that you have something to fall back on for a little bit. Um, and you've got that security of knowing that something is there should anything happen. So I think that's definitely something um, to consider. I think the other there's a couple of other things as well, like getting like the timing right. So making sure um, if you are unable to um, you're able to to try and work out the timing of ending one job and starting the new one and make it work in your favor. OK, what do you mean by that? Ruth? So kind of like if you if you leave a new job. Um, so time it's that you leave one and start the other more or less straight away. So you don't have that break in your income coming in where you're not going to have any money whatsoever so making sure that if you can hand your notice in and make sure you work are okay with leaving on a certain date and then starting your new one on on their given date yeah and that makes perfect sense and i think certainly the position of the vet profession at the moment i know is that because there are so many vacancies so many roles i think people are quite often able to start without the gap but obviously everyone's individual aren't they some people will choose to have that gap and having the finances in place yep. and I guess one of the things that we hear people talk a lot about retrospectively is pensions. So if mm -hmm. someone leaves one job and then move into a new job, what considerations are there around their pensions, Ruth? Um, so you have control of what happens basically. Um, so that's the first thing people often think, oh, I don't have control over, you know, what happens and where, and I don't understand it. You do. Um, so like you've said, if you, if you've leave left a job, um, and you've already got a pension there, you've got three options. So you can leave it where it is and do absolutely nothing. Um, your employer or your previous employer won't be able to take that pension away. Um, the pension will continue to be managed by the pension provider that you're with and will continue to grow in line with its investments. So you can also, number two, combine it with another pension you may um, have already or with your um, new workplace when they set you up with one that is an option or number three is create an actively managed personal pension with a financial advisor like myself who can help you move your pensions across you don't have to worry about it and create one home so no matter where you move your pensions will always be or have a place and you'll get that active management and someone reviewing and overseeing it for you. And in terms of if someone is just leaving a role, they don't know a huge amount about the pension. Yes, they've got options, which is amazing because you've told us now. Where do they start with finding that out? Is there like, do they talk to the HR department? Will they receive a letter from the old company as they change jobs? Like, what should they expect? What you mean if they have a pension and um, they've left their company, what would happen? Yeah, so say someone's about to leave now, they've not even considered their pension, they hadn't even thought yep. about it because they're thinking about everything else, understandably so, and they're like, okay, you've just sparked this moment of inspiration with me, I need to consider my pension, but actually, I'm not really sure where it is, what's going on with it, I see the cash go out of my salary, what do I do? 
So if you've if there's a pension, you can speak to the HR department of the company um, that set that pension up for you. Uh, they should be able to give you your details. Just search, um, you know, in your emails for pension as well. See if you can find it that way. You are able to uh, go on the internet, um, internet and also find it. So you could go on the government website where it says find lost pensions. Um, and you just need to know the name of your employer so they can look there as well. So there's lots of different avenues. You can come to me and I'll help you try and find it for you. So many different options, but you have that pension. Just make sure that you do know where it is um, and don't lose track of it because so many do. Amazing. And again, something that we talk about a lot when we're having these Friday finance talks is in line with our own profession is that individual circumstances really do contribute to what's going to be the quote best decision. There is no best thing to do and not best thing to do other than actually to have awareness of where it is and your options and then work with someone like yourself to actually consider like all of the skyline view of what's going on so I guess when we're looking at like that whole piece of things financially we've talked about emergency funds backup plans gaps in employment are you covered for that gap have you got cushions in place we've talked about pensions a little bit as well yeah if we wanted to look at employee benefits so say for example you've been somewhere where you've got health insurance you've used it a couple of times um and you're about to leave like it, what happens is there a way to take it with you is it not worth taking it with you does that all depend okay brilliant question um it all depends on your kind of personal um circumstances but i would 100 percent say in almost all cases when you leave a job your company health insurance will probably will stop yeah. um but exactly when that happens will depend obviously on your employment contract. The other thing is you may have the option to continue your health insurance cover on an individual policy, but it would depend, there's so many factors on how many, if you've claimed your, your health, how it is, um, but once again, I'd highlight having that protection health check that we offer to see what would be the best solution for you, not just to go with the provider because it's one that your employee, employee used, because they could have used it um, for a number of different reasons. But there are so many out there. Let us have a look at the one that might be more suitable and cheaper for you. Yeah. And like you say, familiarity and convenience doesn't always mean that we're getting the best option for us. So we'll, we'll yeah. talk a little bit more about that protection health check at the end as well which is available for all the protection policies that you've got not just the most common like income protection that comes to mind as protection because it's got protection in the word we're thinking whether we're protecting your health protecting your life protecting you from critical illnesses everything so i guess touching on outside of say employee benefits just and we've said about it already here income protection so as you move from one role to another you yeah. had your income protected and say your salary has gone up maybe it's gone down and you've decided that there are different things in life that you value more than like more cash perhaps you're getting more time off etc do we need to be checking in with our income protection um, companies and just saying look our salaries change now our circumstances have changed if that's their own policy not an employee benefit um absolutely um a hundred percent because it's important that you do tell them because if your income has changed, um, if say it's gone down for whatever reason, um, you could be overinsured. And yeah. when you come to claim, they won't pay out that. Well, depends what you've got. But if it's income protection, won't pay out on that salary because they'll probably ask for proof of earnings yeah. um, at that time. And in which case you could have been paying out more when you could have been paying less, you know, yeah. for less cover. So just keep it updated and make sure that they know so that you give them no excuses to not pay you should you need it at some point, but definitely yeah. keep them updated. No, that, that makes perfect sense. And again, it's just another thing to consider, isn't it? That you don't want to end up getting six months, 12 months down the line, you can come to need to use the policy. And actually it's just something we've not had on our periphery just to give them a quick ring and explain that there's been an update in circumstances. So mm -hmm. I guess another thing for us to touch on as well, because we said a bit about salary, we've talked about um, protections, we've talked about employee benefits, time off in between, pensions as well. I guess now is the perfect time as well to realign on um, budgets and what comes in and what goes out, because this potentially is going to be a change on income isn't it 
Yeah, it really will be a change of income. I always say the financial questionnaire isn't just something that you just do once. It's something that you keep updated. So we're talking now about that there's going to be a, a big increase in energy prices. So petrol, as we all know, has gone up. So it's yeah. making sure that you keep it updated to go, right, well, how much have I got to spend? Because you might not have that set amount at the weekend that you originally had. So you need to make sure that you live within your means and you know what you can afford and just keep topping it up just resave it for a different month so that you know exactly what's happening and in line with um, circumstances with the economy yeah and I guess the flip side of that as well is if you are stepping from one role and you're actually getting a salary increase would be to yeah, spend the time good. and think is there some surplus that I've got each month and is there a wiser place that I could be putting that that it will be earning me cash rather than sitting in a savings account and with inflation like we talked about in the investment session that we did a couple of weeks ago yeah is technically kind of going down in value so I guess moving roles is actually a really empowering time to sit back down check back in on this stuff but I understand for people it might feel a little bit overwhelming it might feel oh my goodness like they've already talked about five different things here and at the same time, I'm going to have to think about settling into a new practice, whether that's clinical, non-clinical, probably new practice management software, new teams to get to know. So having someone on your side that can help you sit down, look at everything from that overall view of you as a human with many different assets, many different um, liabilities, many different things that are going on. What are the benefits to you? For example, working with yourself or another financial advisor during this job transition to make sure that we don't miss anything? Ooh, I've actually helped three three uh, people within the veteran community this this week alone um, take career breaks. Um, one of them's just gone traveling. Um, and another one's just gone abroad um, to to work for a certain period. So we've gone through everything right from the start to say this is where I am now yeah and they talked about this is a drill I always say what are your goals what do you want to achieve you know it's a fun experience and they say well you know what I might want to go traveling or I might want to have my own house or experience working abroad and I'm like okay well let's put a plan in place to do that so we work together and then they come and say, I think the time's coming. And I'll say, right, well, this is how much you've got now. Um, this is what you could do. Even down to, I had a, it was yesterday, I had a conversation and they were saying, you know, do I pay for my storage costs all in one go or do I pay it monthly? And it questions that isn't necessarily, you know, deemed with investing or, or anything else. And I was saying, well, if you do come back early, then you will have to, you'll have already paid for, for, for charges that you might not necessarily need to have. So pay it monthly. And she's like, oh, that was a great, you know, great show. I didn't think about that. So there's lots of different options. And we yeah. go through each of them individually and talk about it so that they're fully aware, clued up and safe in the knowledge that they can go and enjoy themselves rather than worrying about a financial um, concern because I'm looking after it for them. Yeah. And I know we always use the term like best financial friend and <laughs> it makes so much sense when you think of it that way, doesn't it? Having that sounding board, having somebody that does this day in, day out, like yourself, Ruth, where you can come along and say, look, this is a situation, this is what's going on. And you can just hold that space for them, yeah. help them consider it maybe in a different way. And you always say, look, I don't force you down a route. I give you options just mm. like we do, you know, when we're in a consult room, whether we're vets, whether we're nurses, whether we're on the phone um, as client care team members, we just, we're giving people the options there. And yes, yeah. um, as like veterinary surgeons, we're maybe giving them treatment options, but just laying them out and having someone that you know has actually studied this as well. So if there is anyone that's out there at the moment and they're about to transition roles, or maybe, you know what, you're in a role that you're really happy in, but you think, hmm, I should really check in on my finances. Ruth is more than happy to chat with members of the veterinary profession. I mean, certainly there's, there's hundreds now that she's spoken to. And time and time again, we get amazing feedback about just how kind, down-to-earth, approachable Ruth is. You know, we, we give these sessions on a Friday. We put a lot of time into them because we really genuinely want to help you because we're so sad of seeing people find this stuff too late. Like, they'll come to use their income protection policy and then they'll realise that, oh, my goodness, last year when my income actually changed, I didn't tell anyone about it. 
Mm. And now they're quibbling whether they're going to pay it out. And when you're at a point of wanting to use your income protection, you're already having enough stress, let alone having stress and worry about whether it's actually going to pay. So, and I know we touched on it previously in this too, and this is for the wider community. This just isn't just at changing your profession or your role, but it's a really good and empowering time to check in is the protection health check. And I just wondered if you'd explain a little bit more about that as well, Ruth, for anyone that's interested. Yeah, so some people might already have existing policies that they've had for years and haven't had it reviewed because let's face it, you open it up and you're like, where do I start? What does all this mean? I know exactly what I'm looking for when I see these documents and I know rough amounts of how much you should be paying. Um, what the protection health check does is it we go through it in detail, look at your current circumstances and say, is this still relevant? Is it not relevant? Could you get it cheaper? Because usually... Usually companies might develop, they have more, um, um, more options available. If you, for instance, had an injury that was an exclusion on your policy, so it wasn't covered, you might actually be covered for it now. So it could be added back on. And that was something that um, we helped somebody with. It was either this week, you'll be able to tell me, Katie, because she left feedback on it, or last week, because we sent her um, to have this protection health check. And they came back and said, your policy's fine you're great. You're good to go. Yeah. There's nothing else you need. And she was like, now I feel better because I wasn't sold to. I was told that actually what I had was great. And also I'm safe in the knowledge. I don't need to do anything. Yeah. And I mean, we talked about this last week as well, didn't we? That I know previously in the past, I've kind of gone, yeah, I'm sure this will do. Like I'll, you know, I've ticked the box. I've got my income protection now. I've ticked the box. I've got some life insurance. That'll be fine. And then actually learning little bits more seeing more snippets hearing people speak and then getting that little earworm that starts saying yeah but what if it doesn't pay out but you've been paying for it for all this time now like maybe it's uncomfortable for me to decide that perhaps it's not going to pay out for me because I've been paying it and maybe I'll just keep my fingers crossed that nothing will happen and I'm sure it'll be fine and I'm sure I'll figure it out at the time but actually the easiest way to come through that is to take up this offer like Ruth has said, I think it's really powerful that we've had someone that's gone on there and they've been told it's the right thing for them. Like, because it's complimentary. Again, yeah. So it's not actually, it's just the only thing it costs is your time to yeah. do it and just check whether it is right. Yeah. So thank you so much, Ruth. That's been so helpful. I think we've really just pulled up a few things for people to consider. And just to summarize, we've said, thinking about, is there a gap? Can you make yeah. it that you end one role and you start the next one? To make sure there's no financial gap and if there is have you got a buffer for that like let's face it some people do want a gap in between and that's okay but a finance is in place to mean that that's not an unnecessary stress if you do have that space yep. pensions ruth said you've got multiple options with that pension and that's going to depend like, on your circumstances you can speak to your hr department if you want information about where it is if you want help and support with making a decision what to do with it moving forward whether that's the you transfer it, whether you put it all in a central pot, whether it stays where it is, you can speak to Ruth, she can help you. We talked about benefits packages. Most of those are going to continue um, until your employment ends and then stop. But you do have the option maybe to continue it. But like Ruth said, just because it's been familiar and because it's been one that we've used previously, it doesn't always necessarily mean it's going to be the best one for us. So again, Ruth or financial advisors in general can help you with that. We talked about budgeting, maybe it's the time to reassess your budget, get back in on that financial questionnaire, which we have got on the VetU digital delegate bag, which Ruth kindly provided to us, I will pop that in the comments underneath, so you can check in on that, you can go through what comes in every month now, because that's going to be different, you can use some of the salary after tax calculators, figure out what you're going to be getting every month now, and just be empowered from the start, okay, is there any difference, is there a surplus? Is it that I could look at investing any of that? Is there somewhere else that I want to put it to? You've got options there. And then finally, as we were saying, if you just want that peace of mind, you want to check policies that you've got existing, Ruth does kindly offer a complimentary protection health plan, um, check plan, health check. Um, and otherwise, you can book in and you can have a chat with Ruth. And, you know, you can just talk through your individual circumstances and have someone there that is non-judgmentally going to guide you through, look at it from that bird's eye view and help you say, have you thought about this? Have you considered this? And help you just lay down those things on the table because you know what? So many of us put our head in the sand about this 
And actually there are people that are here and they really want to help you. And this is not just for people that have thousands and thousands of pounds sat there to invest. This is for everybody. And I know that's something you're so passionate as well about, isn't it, Ray? Really, very much so. It's helping helping everyone realise that everyone has an option and you've got option to uh, financial advice. You just need your time. That's all it takes. Yeah. So thank you for another fantastic Friday Finance, Ruth. We have been in here just over 15 minutes now. Next week, we're going to jump in here and we're going to talk about financial planning for parents. If you've got children, because I know a few times through the, the webinars that we've done, with yourself Ruth we've started to say oh you could do this for your kids we've touched on it peripherally but we've never actually done a full Friday finance on financial planning with our children in mind so I think that will be a really good insightful session because I've not seen that talked about anywhere before so really looking forward to that one brilliant yeah looking forward to it thank you Amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone that's joined us on the live or is re-watching our pop lots of resources below for you. Thanks everybody. Bye.